JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's Daily Market Review for December the 28th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment, investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered, considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, lower against uh, all but two of the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained only against the yen while it was found virtually unchanged versus uh, the Kiwi. The greenback gained, uh, uh, excuse me, the greenback lost the most, um, the most ground versus uh, the pound and the Swiss franc. Now, the weakening of the Japanese yen and the US dollar suggests that markets continue trading in a risk on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the strengthening of the Swiss franc points otherwise. Therefore, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader investor morale, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Now, here uh, we see that indeed major European indices kept marching north with the optimism rolling uh, and strengthening during the US session. It is worth mentioning that the that the S and P 500 surged to hit a f uh, fresh record high. Stock indices remained relatively supported during the Asian session uh, today as well, with Japan's um, with Japan's Nikkei gaining uh, gaining the most. Now the latest rebound in risky assets was activated uh, last week by new reports confirming that uh, the Omicron coronavirus variant, although more, t more trans transmissive than its uh, predecessors, leads to fewer hospitalizations and deaths. Now, despite US airlines cancelling or delaying thousands of flights over the past uh, few days due to the pandemic, several cruise ships um, cancelling stops after outbreaks on board, and China reporting its highest uh, its highest daily rise in COVID cases in 21 months, investors may have remained uh, optimistic that a spike in Omicron cases may not necessarily mean new restrictions, as it may not lead uh, to that many hospitalizations. However, there is also the other side of the coin. The outbreak of the Omicron variant doesn't mean that other, more deadly strains like the Delta, are uh, off the map, and what's uh, more, several nations may be waiting for the holiday season to end before imposing new restrictions. Some say that stocks may have been also boosted by a MasterCard uh, survey, which showed a substantial rise in U.S. holiday season retail sales. But if this was the case, wouldn't the dollar be strong, uh, stronger as well? Now, in our, in our view, last week's uh, optimism. Combined with uh, an empty agenda and thin liquidity this week may have set the stage for the so-called Sanda Rally. And maybe this is what we are experiencing now. Absent any surprising and shocking headlines, we believe that this could continue until the end of the week. However, as we noted yesterday, we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. As, um, as we already noted, several nations around the globe may prefer to tighten uh, uh, further th their restrictions uh, after the holiday season. And this and the fact that uh, most uh, major central banks are in the process of uh, removing and not adding stimulus due to extremely high inflation. Uh, so with all that in mind, we cannot uh, rule out uh, some setbacks after the turn of uh, the year. Now, as uh, for today's events, the only release worth mentioning on today's agenda is the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for December, but no forecasts available. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening.
For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.